Hey, welcome back to Uncommon Pallor, and uh, kind of an overdue update. I meant to do this last week, but my my work has been fucking grueling, so I don't really feel like doing much of anything. Um, you know, since the last one, I've got a ton of mail order stuff in, and I went for a you know a private like COVID friendly you know dig at uh, Hammer City Records in Hamilton, Ontario. So uh, I just threw all that stuff together, and I'll go through it here briefly. Um, I'm going to start out with a DVD I got in the mail. Um, it's Oil Capital Underground. It's uh, the history of, of punk in Tulsa, Oklahoma from the late 70s to the to the mid-90s. I, I love these like regional you know documentaries about their, their old scenes and stuff. I just find them interesting. This one popped up on my uh, on my YouTube recommendations, so I watched it, and then I figured I'd get a copy. And the only place I could find it was Amazon, but they wouldn't ship to Canada, so I had to track down Brian Crane that directed it, and I ended up buying a copy off him. So it's uh it's good. It's it starts out like with you know like the old bands like Los Reactors, who most people know for Dead in the Suburbs and Laboratory Baby, and then on to New Mysterians, and then hit the 80s with NOTA, who are pretty much the reason I got this, because NOTA is fucking awesome. Um, and then, you know, bands like Asylum and Cenotaph, and then you get into the 90s, and it was, from there I was like, eh, because most of the, the 90s bands there were just kind of like shitty indie rock bands, but to those people, like, you know, that were locals, they were great, but to me, I'm like, nope. Um, aside from Brother Inferior, there's some of their footage in there, and they're, they're, they're good, so, yeah, but... Check it out. Oil Capital Underground. See it if you can. It's worth it. Okay, on to records. <clears throat> Got the new Schizophrenic Records release. 7-inch by Sadie and the Wives. Um, they're a band from Hamilton. They, uh, they're they they're young. I've seen them play a few times, and they're they're awesome. Just short to the point sets. A lot of, like, rolling around on the floor and going crazy. Um, you know, they... Uh, Sound-wise, they're... You know, I could, I would maybe, I can hear a bit of like shit from Toronto in there, but I can also hear some Left 4 Dead, which, you know, is no big surprise considering they're from Hamilton. Um, the drummer, this band's father, drummed for Left 4 Dead, so I guess that makes sense, carrying on the tradition. But, uh, but yeah, pick it up if you can, Sadie and the Wise, because this is a fucking banger. Uh, next up, new release by, uh, or on Iron Lung Records by a band from Chicago called Chew. I, I picked up their LP that Iron Lung released like last year or the year before. Uh, they're good. They fit in well with the with the hardcore bands on Iron Lung. Like there's there's no like real power violence to this. It's just like thick, you know, modern, you know, pissed off hardcore. The drummer in this band's fucking awesome though. There's a lot of really cool drum parts in this. But uh, I I kind of feel these guys are overlooked a bit. Like they're kind of underappreciated. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely worth it, though. I've listened to this a whole fucking bunch. So, yeah, chew. It's called In Due Time. Next up is uh, a fucking awesome band on a shitty format. So the band is Suck Lords. They're from Portland, Oregon. Uh, songs the Lords taught us. But the shitty thing is that it's a flexi, which is annoying. It's on Edger Records. Uh, I've followed this band since they started. I just, I heard their demo and loved it, so I ordered it, and I've got everything since. It's just, you know, it's early Poison Idea worship is what it sounds like, and it, they do it well. Like, I like it. Um, there's members in here that also play in Unix, and, uh, somebody was in NASA Space Universe, and I think Mongoloid. Um, but yeah, definitely a great band. It's just, you know, it doesn't sound bad for a flexi, but just flexies are annoying. Next up, Australia. It's a solo project by Jake Robertson from House Mutants called uh, Alien Nose Job. It's Death of the Vinyl Boom. It's a self-released one from a year or two ago. Um, this is... It, it's weird. It's kind of angular. It kind of reminds me of you know bands like Liquids and Coneheads, like those Northwest Indiana bands. But if you mixed like Crass or maybe some of that early UK DIY stuff into it, it's just, you know, like fast drummed guitars, kind of clever lyrics, funny, you know, just fun, all around fun band. Um, you know, I know a lot of people like these guys. They they definitely appeal to a wide, a wide audience. Like, 
everybody from like you know hardcore kids to pop punk kids would probably appreciate this. Um, kind of think it sucks that I slept on them a bit because I just thought they'd be me, eh, whatever. It's kind of a dumb name, but I may have to pick some more up. Uh, bootleg here of Teenage Heads Picture My Face single from 1982. The B side is uh, Tearing Me Apart, which is actually, I think, my favorite Teenage Head song. Um, I don't think Teenage Head needs much of an introduction. They're pretty well known internationally. Like, they're like a classic punk band. Um, just, you know, it's just rock and roll, you know, done right. Uh, the problem with this, though, is that the songs were re-recorded. So they're not the original songs that were on the single, which is, I don't, I don't get it. It's stupid. I would just release them with those versions, like with the proper versions, but they didn't. So I don't know. Originally released on Epic in 1978, but I don't know. It's just a weird bootleg and I don't know why they would do that, but whatever it is what it is, I guess. <clears throat> uh, the Child Molesters, I'm the Hillside Strangler. So this was originally released in 1978 as well on Ace and Deuce, which was the band's own label. Um, A-Side, awesome. It's just, like, these guys, they were from L.A., and they did not give a fuck. Like, they, they can't play very well, and they don't care. Um, they just have, like, kind of, you know, sloppy, you know, unapologetic punk here. Um, the B side is a cover of Yoko Ono's, uh, don't worry, Kyoko, mommy's only looking for her hand in the snow, which is long and boring. And I've, I lose interest after, you know, about 40 seconds. So definitely get this for the A side though. Cause it's, it's just good. They have, uh, they have a fair amount of stuff out. So, um, this was, a, this is a repress on Meat House Productions from, I think 2018 or something. Or a reissue, rather. Um, here's another reissue. It's on Last Laugh. Originally on Sexo Records from 1978. Ed Nasty and the Dopeheads. I'm going to be everything. Backed with You Sucker. Um, they've been comped on Killed by Death. Uh, compilations. These guys give even less of a fuck than the Child Molesters. It's like two notes. They can barely play. It's repetitive and just, you know, <laughs> they, just, they just didn't really know what they were doing or... So it seems. Um, no information about this band on the internet at all, aside from the fact that they started after the Sex Pistols went through the American South. Um, they're from Jackson, Mississippi, though, so I'll give them credit for having some balls because it could not have been easy being a punk rocker in Jackson, Mississippi in 1978. So, uh, yeah, Ed Nasty and the Dopeheads. Next, Young Republicans. Sabotage Your Cookout. Uh, this band was either from Connecticut or, or New York. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, everybody in this band, aside from the singer, went on to be in Youth of Today. Most notably, Porcel. It was recorded in 1983. was not released until 2010, I think, on More Than a Witness, which is this. Um, it's just standard run-of-the-mill early 80s hardcore punk. Like, it's... You know, kind of like early bad religion in that it goes from like, you know, slow plotting parts to just up tempo parts back to the slow plotting parts. It's, I mean, if I'm going to listen to 80s hardcore, I'm going to reach for something else. But this is pretty interesting from a historical standpoint. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, it is what it is. It's just it's early punk, early punk hardcore. So yeah, Young Republicans. Next, a couple from uh, a couple on Splattered Records, both uh, British bands. First off, Left Hand Drive, Jailbait, Motorway Crow. Uh, the A side's fucking awesome and super catchy. It's a total earworm for me. Um, it sound, it kind of sounds like a pub rock version of Cheat Trick, I think, but it's it's super catchy. They get lumped into the new wave of British heavy metal, but this doesn't sound like metal to me at all. Uh, it was originally released in 1977. It's one of those records that you probably have to get a second mortgage to uh, to actually buy an original copy. Uh, the B side's okay. It's it's you know it's it's not as catchy as the A side, and it's I mean it's 
you know, it's a little bit boring, but it's, it's not bad. It's okay. I've never ever heard of this band before, so I kind of I kind of just really trust Splattered because they're they're pretty much on the ball. Another one here on Splattered, originally released in 1982, Centurion, uh, Two Wheels, and Bitch. I'm surprised I'd never heard this band before because Two Wheels is a fucking fantastic track. It's you know Judas Priest inspired like new wave of British heavy metal stuff. So good. There's a break in the middle of a song where a motorcycle goes rolling through. Um, the the B side, however, it's just it's juvenile and stupid. Like it's one of those you know like sore loser. You know boy loses girl, so she's a bitch. You know it's just it's moronic. So definitely get this record. Just buy it for the A side because Two Wheels is fucking awesome. Uh, next up, a couple, uh, well, the last two 7 inches I have here are, uh, like I said in, in uh, my other video, I'm trying to get all the records that are on uh, Legion of Death. So here's two more for the, uh, to throw in there. This one's from 2002, Barbatos, it's War Metal Drinkers. I've, I've heard these guys before, I, I have a split record with them, I think it's them in At War, a split 7 inch. Um, band from Japan. It's uh, it's a I think it's a solo project I th think, but oh no I guess it isn't. Um, the main guy in this is uh he's from Abigail and and bands like that the Black and Thrash bands where they're kind of incestuous. Um, this does not this is not really metal. It's more like just s kind of simple simple punk with gruff vocals, maybe like uh you know. A certain period of Gigi Allen work because the vocals just kind of remind me of that style, I guess, just without all the, all the crazy talk. But yeah, they're it's that's not too bad. This is uh, I think this might be like Legion of Death. Yeah, it's Legion of Death three. So getting closer to having all of them. And last up, a band from Bolivia. It's also a Legion of Death. It's Culto Maldito. Um. See if I can fucking pronounce this. Alcohol e metal has to sangrar. This is uh, it's like a death metal, thrash metal type thing. Um, it's it's pretty good. It's not bad. The drummer's got a really weird style where he'll do a fill, but it it almost seems to go longer than you expect it to go, and it it kind of sounds like it almost fucks the the rest of the band up because the guy just doesn't stop when you would think he would stop so but all in all i mean it's pretty good i think they're still around they have a bunch of shit out but yeah culto Maldito, bolivia on to 12 inches 2010 release on schizophrenic from rammer it's a 12 inch ep uh it's got an etched or a screened b-side rammer is from toronto i'm i, I think a. I think a lot of people are familiar with them already. Um, the singer went on to be in Column of Heaven, and now he's in uh, Bleeding Out. It's Dave. And, uh, like, Joel from this band, the guitar player, he's uh, he's in Absolute. You know, I don't know where the rest of the guys are. I mean, Al, last time I seen him, he was in Hassler. Um, yeah, it's just good, you know, thrash, sometimes leaning towards death metal. Um Dave's voice is pretty unmistakable, so it's, you know, it's just gruff and pissed off, and yeah, really, really good band, really good uh, instrumentation on it, those guys knew how to play, but I, I didn't have this one, so I figured, okay, I better pick it up, so yeah, uh, here's a reissue, I always saw this in magazines when I was a kid, and the cover always just seemed ridiculous to me. It's from 1985. Um, it's Destructor with Maximum Destruction. It was originally re originally released on Auburn Records. This one's on Reaper Metal. Um, I was doing a, an order to Hell's Headbangers anyways, and I had watched a, like a Reaper podcast where it interviewed the singer from this band. So I was like, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. So I ordered it because I'd never actually heard it. And I actually like it a lot more than I thought I would. It's just you know, good thrash, you know, it's, but it's kind of got that raw, like, 
DIY kind of quality to it, which appeals to me. It's not overproduced, like, in the least. So, yeah, it, it's pretty good. I like it. Next to reissue on uh, Listenable Records of Satan's Court in the Act. It was, uh, originally came out on Neat in 1983, and then it came out on Metal Blade, and then I started seeing it in, in magazines. And I always wanted it, but I never, ever saw it in person, like at record stores or anything. And I didn't want to, I didn't like ordering things through the mail back then because it was kind of hit and miss if you would get it. You'd have to throw cash in and money orders suck. Um, definitely not as good as early Satan because, I mean, the first single is a maybe the best new wave of British heavy metal record ever, in my opinion. Um, but this is still good. This is still good. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's what you'd expect. It's just, you know, solid new wave of British heavy metal. It's called Brian Ross on vocals, who was in uh, Blitzkrieg, and I think he was in a Avenger as well. Um, yeah, I just always wanted it, and I, I don't really, I don't want it enough to pay what you pay for an original pressing, so I'll take the listenable one. I did kind of find it funny, though, that, you know, you got a band like Satan, and the cover's all evil looking. That's not a satanic cover, or a color for a uh, for a record it kind of i don't know it's kind of irony it's like a day at the beach color record and then you got this burned at the stake british metal type shit so whatever it's good though glad i finally got a copy uh reissue oh, there's another reissue on wax maniacs of the uh, third acid record engine beast it's a british or a belgian metal band you know, like speed metal type stuff, female vocals. Pretty good. I'd heard them before. I just never really bothered buying their records, and this one popped up, and it was cheap. So I was like, eh, I'll pick it up. It's good. It's good. I like it. I, I like a lot of the old metal with the female vocalists for some reason. I just kind of grew into that. Uh, next up, Half Life. What's Right? This was, uh, I think it was recorded in 1983. 80, yeah, 83 or 84. Uh, but it wasn't released until 2001 on Get Hip, which is this. Uh, it's just really solid, you know, early 80s hardcore. I mean, I, I have the record from 1989, I think, and it's definitely not as fast and raw as this, but it's still good. I still really like it. But uh, but this is this almost sounds, in a way, like a different band. It's, you know, a lot faster, raw, and more trebly. Not as well produced. Um, yeah, they're from Pittsburgh originally um i think somebody in this band also played in in uh, doom watch so yeah half-life next uh split release between 625 thrashcore and agipunk it's uh use arse 1981 to 1985 you know if you've if you've heard early italian hardcore you know the drill it's like ready to fall apart kind of it's just furious and pissy and all that this then this fits in well with that it's it's not like you know as metal as something like raw power but it would fit in more with declino and you know maybe indigesti and peggio punks and stuff like that just angry you know no metal hardcore punk from italy so yeah uh sound quality on it kind of varies though i think there's some rehearsal stuff in here and some live stuff so it's doesn't sound quite as good but the studio stuff sounds really good uh nations on fire Strike the Match, band from Belgium. Uh, I had this before, and I, you know, traded off during the years, but it's, it's it's pretty good. It's like straight edge sounding hardcore kinda. It's fast. Um, the singer sounds like a cross between like Tony Erba and Grover from the Muppets. Uh, really political. There's there's uh you know a lot of talk of environmental stuff and all that, but uh, I saw it and it was cheap. And I was like, I can handle listening to that again. The song Bug in My Eyes, my jam from this one. So yeah, and she's on fire. I got an upgrade copy of Corrosion to Conformity, Technocracy, from 1987. It's Canadian pressing on Fringe product. Uh, it's got Simon Bob on uh, vocals from The Ugly Americans. Not my favorite COC record. Like, I mean, definitely better than everything that came out after this. But uh, Animosity is the one that I like. It's it's the one I heard first, but I also like just its overall sound. This is a lot cleaner. Um, doesn't have the hissy vocals, and it's it's got more metal production. So, but yeah, I just needed an upgrade, and it was cheap. So, 
Why not? North Carolina's finest. Uh, two more. We got Capital Punishment, Super Glutton, 1989, on Duck Butter Records. I love Capital Punishment. You know, just a, you know, no-nonsense California punk band, gravelly vocals. The guitars always sounded really urgent to me. I always really liked it. But I never heard anything past the second LP. Like, I think I, I heard some comp tracks that were recorded after that. They were still good, but this kind of sucks. It's totally different than what they do. It, it almost sounds like it's headed towards, like, an Epitaph record sound or something. I mean, I kind of hummed and hawed. It wasn't very much money, but it was, you know, from 1989, and usually that's hit and miss with, like, bands that came from way earlier, so... I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it, but whatever. If you're a completist for capital punishment, then pick it up, I guess. And then last but not least, on Supreme Echo, we got Twitch, Dark Ears. Um, Twitch was a band from Vancouver, British Columbia. They uh, This is recorded in 1974. They were doing black metal theatrics, you know, way back then. Um, it's kind of, it's a mishmash of sounds. There's like a, you know, like a proto-doom, a proto-metal, you know, there's some boogie rock in here and some psych. Like, it's, it's really, really good, though. Um, there's supposed to be a giant booklet in it, though, and mine did not have the booklet. So I contacted, uh, Jason Flower at Supreme Echo. He said he's going to repress it later this year, so he'll get me a booklet. But, but, uh, yeah, he's done, he's done, I think, two seven inches as well of, uh, of these guys stuff that's been dug up over the years so it's definitely good check it out if you're if you have a if you're into that like you know early early proto metal type shit they won't disappoint you so yeah i guess that's all i got i did this in 22 minutes so uh yeah everybody have a have a good rest of your weekend and have a good work week and i will see you sometime soon bye cheers see ya